Three engineers are going to race to design the best PCB in the fastest time with the winner winning $500. On your mark, get set, go. I've given all the participants the exact same schematic to start with. We have Victoria using KiCad. We have Craig using Altium. And then we have Kevin using Easy EDA. At the end of this video, we're gonna be doing an in-depth design review of each participant's design. And the winner is gonna win $500 in credit from the popular PCB manufacturer, JLC PCB. Um, so right now I'm just going through and grouping everything kind of by uh, different schematic portions. I think I'm gonna make a cool board shape. I'm going for creativity. I'm gonna go for uh, tightest packing here. I'm gonna see how small I can make it. Oh no, what is Craig got going on there? It's like a board the shape of a human head. Yeah, but whose head is it, John? Oh no. I reckon, are those my <laughs> ears? <laughs> uh, maybe? I think you need to change your channel to unpredictable designs, because you didn't see that one coming. Oh, you know what would be good? If I put the buttons on the ears. A button on the nose, too. Oh, the, oh ooh, I'll put the RGB right An on LED. the nose. Oh, I like that the, the ESP32 is the brain. That's ah, good. good point. I didn't think about that one. Man, I have a lot of empty space up there, though. I'm curious, do most of you tend to stick with the ESP32 module? I usually do module. I've done both. I think it's a lot easier doing the module. Plus, then you don't have to fight as much with uh, certification because they already have that module FCC certified. Kevin, are you going two-layer or four-layer? Uh, I'm going to start with uh, two-layer. And if I run into, uh, so pretty much I'll try doing, like I'll do all the routing and then kind of finish up ground last. And if it becomes impossible to get everything grounded with two layer, then, and uh, if it looks like signal integrity might be an issue, then just from there. But I'll, I'll start with planning for two layer. I'm going four layers this time. What about you, Victoria? Are you going two or four? Probably four again, just so I can have a 3.3 volt plane and keep everything simple, not have a nasty power net. All right, this time I'm going to do my differential pairs first because I got I got screwed last time. That's that's the way I always do it as well. Start with those first. Kevin, looking good. Yeah, I'm putting down the board outline. That, that's uh, we'll we'll set that as the uh, the goal and see if I can stay within that. Okay. <laughs> differential run i didn't end up doing like an actual differential pair here just because i was able to keep it so short like i'm pretty much going directly from the breakout to the pad how much power are we pulling on this thing it's time to look at some data sheets data sheet this could be this could be super low power oh yeah i think it's only 500 milliamps on the ldo the only thing that's going to pull any power is the esp32 itself when it's transmitting yeah. or, or receiving the wi-fi Oh, I just gave John a, a, a copper pour beard. Turned out pretty good. Okay. I like the button ears. I think that's my favorite. <laughs> I can't wait to see this, Craig. I'm excited. Why is this happening? That's my question today, too. I keep selecting the entire net and trying to thicken it in only section, like one section at a time. And I'm like, why is KiCad not working with me today? I'm putting down a via. I give it the right net, ground. I run a trace to the via, and it disappears. <laughs> Why is it doing that? That sounds like some Twilight Zone stuff. I've never ran into that with Altium before. Feel free to call Altium Tech Support. She's on the call. She's right here. Victoria, help me out. Kevin's leading on the size front. Craig's leading on the creativity front. And Victoria's uh, leading on the helpful front right now. I'm leading on vibes alone. Yeah, good vibes. Yeah. <laughs> helpful vibes. What are you looking up, Kevin? Are you looking up the rules? I'm looking up uh, how small of a V I can get okay, through, gotcha. uh, through them. My board went on a little diet. It's a little skinnier now. Kevin, I will say your design is looking quite compact. You've really got it packed in there tightly. I'm trying. The, the only thing I couldn't fit was... Uh, the, the silk screen for the, for the buttons, <laughs> but those will go on the back side. It'll be it'll be all good. Let's see how this stitching via tool goes. Oh, look at that! That's a solid ground there. So, Kevin, what uh, verifications have you run? You've have you already ran uh, design rules check DRC or? Yeah, I, I already ran those. So the only one that's still sticking around is that uh, I have a really small via that I had to throw in here to get that uh, center connected to ground for the diode. Gotcha, for the, for the ESD, ESD diodes, okay, yeah. Yep, yep. I went too compact on the uh, USB. So I'm seeing for VIA, 0.15 mil hole, or millimeter hole, and then 0.25 millimeter via diameter. So I think I'm I am within their manufacturing capabilities. Yeah, I'm running into some, some issues. I guess usually when I put a fill and I pour it, I see something. 
which happened once, but now it's just like a farce. But then if I go to my 3D view, it looks like there's something poured. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or what's going on with KiCad, because that definitely looks like poured copper. You know what this needs? Hang on, I've got an idea. For style points coming up. Oh yeah, check that out. What is that that you're... That's your oh, face. Oh my goodness. I really wish I could see this. Oh man, I think it's going to be good. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. Let's see what happens if I run DRC here. That's a spirit. I think that's what it's yelling at me mostly about is silk screens on top of things. And oh, it's... just oh, on top of pads, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, like that one, yeah. What are you working on, Kevin? I'm looking at the temp humidity sensor, if I can kind of clean that up and make sure there's not any thermal transfer coming from anywhere else in the circuit that might influence it. So it looks like all three of you are down to like DRC type errors or working on the DRC getting that clean. Yeah. All these are yelling at me about the solder mask clearance for some reason. Yeah, there's Why? times I find dealing with DRC errors can be the most annoying part of doing the design. Time to delete all my copper pores. Why is that? So I still can't see them. And some of my violations are saying that I don't have, it's saying one thermal spoke and so too. But as you can see here, I can't see any thermal spokes on my You can't see 2D. anything. I guess if I go to my 3D, I can see them. Oh, okay. Well. So maybe I'll troubleshoot that way. But gosh, this is not fun. I need uh, the uh, requirement for creativity here. Some advertisement. There you go. Okay, I am I am done. I'm done. I said it first. I'm kidding. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and then I'll I'll make your your Gerbers right now. No oh, more, okay. Well, that's you're not quite done. We got to finish this. Oh, okay, I have to. Okay, okay. Export Gerbers. Okay, Gerbers are exported. Export pick and place file. Was it just Gerbers or all of those? Gerbers, yeah, pick and place and BOM. And drill files as well, correct? Yeah, and drill files as well that show where all the via drills and mounting holes are. Okay, done. He's done. Oh, fine. I guess I've generated my Gerbers and drill files, and now I just need to export pick and place. I feel I feel pretty good about this board here. And you've ran the verification against the schematic, and it it's all good there. Good question. I didn't do that yet. Okay, I've got some Gerbers. I've got some. I've got the pick and place. All right, I'm calling done. Okay, done. Mark it. Man, that was, a, that was a tight race. Okay, now we're going to review each of the designs. So I've created a download pack that includes all of the design files from this battle, along with the design review documents that we did for each of the designs. And you can find the link to that design pack in the description below or in the comment section. Let's uh, start by taking a look at Victoria's design here, which was done in KiCad. Uh, this is the 3D model for her board. Uh, you can see that the ESP32 placement is good. She's got it in the ideal location with the antenna actually hanging over the edge of the board. That's the best case scenario. She's got some empty space here. It's not super tightly packed, but the only other issue I see is that she's got some of the silk screen that various component designators are overlapping pads. Uh, so those are going to be cut off and, and not visible. Let's take a look now at her PCB layout. Main things I see is there are no stitching ground vias underneath the ESP32. So having a lot of stitching vias in here will just help to dissipate the heat being generated by the ESP32. Then let's take a look at her uh, differential pair, which is uh, coming off of the USB-C connector. They go through the ESD. She's got those routers, a differential pair. Uh, then she's uh, got a via, two vias on each one. And here's the two vias, differential pair, another set of vias. But ideally, I would, I would try to avoid the use of the vias. I liked that she did a four layer board. So her two internal layers, she's got one layer that is, uh, this is all, this is ground. And then she has a layer here that's for the 3.3. This is the 3.3 line powering the ESP32. And she's got a via here. She's got her decoupling capacitors right next to the pad, which is good. Now let's take a look at Kevin's design, who did this in Easy EDA. You can tell that Kevin definitely went for the small factor. It's a uh, by far the most compact board. In fact, uh, it's a little too compact. I think he sacrificed some design quality in term, you know, in exchange for getting a really small size. The, the most important issue that I see with this design is. Uh, his 3D model is a little weird. It doesn't, it just shows a block for the whole module, but this portion up here is the antenna, just like what we saw on Victoria's design. His is not hanging over the edge of the board. It's actually on top of the board, which is fine if you have proper ground clearance. So he's got a ground clearance underneath the antenna, but 
he's got ground from the circuit that's right next to it. And that's really going to impact the performance of the antenna and the, the range that you're going to be able to get. If this was a design that I was doing, what I would do is I would, I would slide this forward and just make the antenna hang off the edge. Assuming that works in the product that it's going into. Let's take a look at his PCB layout. The main issue I see was the, the power routing. I mean, it's okay, but it's just less than optimal. Whereas you saw in Victoria had an entire ground plane for the 3.3 volt rail. Kevin has instead just done uh, traces. And that's like this here is a 3.3. And you can see it comes up here. And this is where it grabs the 3.3 volt supply for the ESP32 module. It's fine. It's going to work. It's, he's set this at 10 mils uh, width, which can easily carry more than enough current for this design. But in general, it's always preferred, I think, to use copper pores when possible for any power routing. And now finally, let's take a look at Craig's design, who did this in Altium. He obviously went for the creativity score. Uh, he did not go for the size score. There's a lot of wasted space. He was quite comical and made his board in the shape of my head. But overall, you know, it's obviously not at all space optimized, but it, it's a good design. He did a really good job on the differential pair. I like that he used copper pores. Like for instance, you can see here where the decoupling capacitors are for the power for the ESP32. This is a copper pore here with vias and that connects in here. This is also, I believe this pore here is his 3.3 volt rail as well. So. Instead of doing an entire layer with a copper pour, he did smaller copper pours. The main thing that he did wrong, he doesn't have the copper pours on the internal layer. So he's got this copper pour is supposed to connect to this copper pour on an internal layer. Okay, now that we've reviewed all the designs, it's time to pick the winner. In terms of design speed, Kevin comes in first place. Kevin also comes in first place in terms of PCB size. Then for creativity, Craig gets first place. And then for overall design quality, Victoria gets first place. So since he won two of the four categories, Kevin Brown gets the overall first place for this battle. If you enjoyed this video be sure you check out this other battle video where three engineers race against the clock to design a custom pcb in only two hours be sure you check it out